Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanime. So we're going to begin here with this tweet from Ripple. <laughs> There's heavy implications here. People better get prepared. A lot of value is going to come out of this. I'm telling you now, and it will make that price move. Now, this I'm, I, I want to read this little tweet and I'm going to pair something with it. It says here, blockchain is a powerful tool that can improve transparency, accountability and traceability of redacted gas emissions listen that's some first of all there's some heavy heavy implications there transparency to what degree when we're talking about on an industrial level versus which is the voluntary they've already instituted voluntary measures already but then on an individual level that's where you better start questioning things people better start questioning what do you mean transparency how much do you got to look into me if we institute these things where there's carbon credits they're already starting to do that in other nations by the way let me tell you something it ain't fun it's not fun, right? So what do you mean transparency, right? I mean, people in the West better start asking that. How much do you have to look into me? How much do you have to trace my, my vehicle, right? All the vehicle, vehicles have these systems now instituted in them where anybody in the legal system can tap in and see where you're going or what you're doing. Sometimes they can even shut your vehicle off, stuff like that. But I'm just saying, you gotta ask these questions, right? Okay, so now there's traceability. I mean, transparency, allegedly, right? How much you want to look into my private life? Maybe I want to go somewhere and you don't need to know about that. That's my right to go somewhere and you don't know about it. People can debate that, you know, you're entitled to whatever you feel. However, then that leads to another thing. All the people that are struggling that, and the governments haven't done what they're supposed to do to make people, to give people the opportunity to be, be able to live the way that they want to live by the sweat of their own brow because of things the government did itself, the central banks did itself, overprinting money, just handing money out like it's candy, things like that. Then let's uh, inflation. Now they got to take stuff out of there. We're looking at mass layoffs every single week. They did that. The people didn't do that. The people didn't do that. So now the people have to struggle because of what you did. I'm thinking about, I'm just thinking about it logically. So the people have to struggle based on what you did, central banks, Fed, governments, right? Then on top of that, now they also have to continue to be subject to more taxes. So then you beef up the tax, tax collectors. They hire thousands of tax collectors. Who's that for? It ain't for the rich. They're living off of interest. You didn't know that? They're living off of interest, non-taxable income, whatever, however you want to put that. Everybody that's wise is doing that. So who's all of those uh, tax collectors for, huh? Oh yeah, right, 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 right. Now, so you, so there's going to be a lot of money extracted from that. Now, as I said before, people that are holding the bank coins are going to possibly benefit greatly off of that. That definitely is going to move that price. They're going to be taxing uh, large companies and the companies are going to pay. That's the thing. The large companies have no problem. They're going to be, they're going to say to themselves, well, we're using this much carbon today. So we're going to pay for this much. And that money is going to be flowing across chain and they're not, they don't trust those other entities, the central banks and governments, the companies don't trust them because they know already they've bought and sold a lot of them. So they know we don't need to trust them. That's why the DLTs are going to be used. Also, it's a medium where there is transparency on that level. So they can say, listen, we did pay you. See that it's right there. Everybody can see as a matter of fact. So you, they can't lie. It takes away that element of being able to lie at least easily. Right. Because it's open. Anybody can check what's on the chain. Right. Immutable. Right. Alleged supposed to be immutable. Allegedly. So they're going to use it for that reason as well. Transaction fees, fines, stuff like it's going to get it's get, going to get deep. The European Central Bank, if I didn't say it before, has been pushing this heavy on their Twitter like there's no tomorrow. They want this badly because the central banks need more ways to extract currency. And the heck, all the banks are going to get on, get in on it like it's a feeding frenzy. Right. And anybody who's wise is going to get in on, get in on it as well. Like. The people who are holding the bank coins are already in on it. They're early. That's why Ripple makes these tweets shooting off the flare saying, hey, pff, listen, anybody who wants to who needs infrastructure for this, we're the best. That's what Ripple is saying. So all those trillion, it will be trillions, by the way, because why do I say that? Because it's not just the West. The R Ripple spans everywhere. Ripples in the West, Ripples in the BRICS nations, Ripples dealing with countries is not even associated really heavily with anybody. Ripple has corridors everywhere. So does Stellar, Algorand, the bank coins as a whole, Hedera. So they keep sending off the flare. They're literally letting people know each week, listen, the price going up. 
That's why you have people saying, listen, I'm waiting on $100 XRP, $500 XRP, $1,000 XRP, because XRP doesn't have a limit where that price can go. Everybody has a different price they're waiting on. However, that's going to happen. Because the only, the only limitation is what they issue on the chain. You've heard brilliant minds say that before, right? So it's true. And you can't have two different XRP prices. Uh, uh, David Schwartz already said that. You can look that up. So it's not going to be two prices of XRP. It's going to be one price of XRP. But once all these institutions start using it, holy smokes, you better hold on to your blazer. It's over. Boom. This is logical. You got to be logical here when you're talking about money. Take the emotion out. Be logical. Look at the actual data that's there, the information that's there. Do some, do the research, right? So um, I was reading an article and we might actually get to that article. I was reading an article and they're like, they're saying, well, there's some banks already using XRP to the most minor degree that you can. The entire network has to be up and running for you to really use on demand liquidity. That's what the network is about or else it wouldn't be a network. You can't have six or seven that are just experimenting, experimenting with it. Then you have very light researchers coming in because they want to write an article very quick to get some views. And they say, well, these banks are using it. You make it sound like they're up and running 100 percent, 100 percent. And they're sending millions and millions in interbank payments already. No, they're testing the stuff out. This is a testing period. This is why you have Brad Garlinghouse or why would he say this? You have Brad, Brad Garlinghouse saying that in the future, they'll be ready to flip the switch. Look up, just type in Brad Garlinghouse, flip the switch comments and then read the paragraphs on that. Right. He wouldn't say that if everything was up and running already. They're testing. This is the early period. We're in super early, even though some people have been holding for a long time. I, I get that. I understand this is still early. Same thing with XLM and everything. We're in the very, very early stages and you can't rush infrastructure on a new system payment system. That's literally going to change the world and affect everything and affects who's going to live a certain way, who's going to die a certain way, who's going to be able to buy what, move what, where, who's in charge, who has power. It's connected to everything. The rabbit hole gets deep, very, very deep. Then on top of that, there's a war happening on many different levels. Some of the banks are rogue. Some of the governmental entities are rogue because they don't want they, they're going to get exposed. They know once those that new system. It's not just a new financial system. They know once that new system is, is, is instituted, oh, oh, baby. Oh, we're about to know a whole lot. Where did that money go? Oh, we don't have to ask you now. We can just look on chain. Who spent that money where? Oh, don't worry. Don't even worry about it. We can look on chain. There's so much that's going to get exposed. So they're trying to squeeze the last of this corrupt uh, way of earning money and moving money back and forth and paying people off. They're trying to squeeze the last little bit of that out of the old system before they institute the new financial system. That's why there's been so much resistance. Resistance, and I guarantee you, there's a lot of cleaning up going on. There's a lot of cleaning up going on. We, this is not the first time we've seen that. So people are trying to make sure certain information is gone, disappeared. Come on, how do you lose trillions of dollars? Tell me that right now. You think you think that that's really possible? If they lost trillions or they lost billions, it's on purpose. You don't lose that kind of thing. Not at that level. They made it so that it couldn't be tracked or traced. There's a reason for these things. That's that's what I'm bringing this up for. So, so that's going to take time because then you have to forcefully institute these things. You have to find a way that there's no way that anybody could resist and then put the system in. So it's taking time. It's taking time. And you know what's actually interesting? I actually believe. The Bank of International Settlements is underestimating how corrupt the West really is. <laughs> I really do. They're, the Bank of International Settlements went from their time period of four to five years, which we already were down a year. So that left four years left. That was that, on the old time scale that left four years left. Then they came out with the documents recently. They said they were pushing all the banks to institute the systems in two to three years, two to three, two to what? I, I don't think you I don't think they understand because, you know, they're doing their own thing. How deep I won't even just say the West, but I know Europe is deep in corruption. But how deep the corruption goes in the United States. I think four years is I think four years is, is a good enough time period. And even I always say even that was pushing it. That's why I always consider these long holes. Don't get me wrong. You're going to get the floods. Boom. XRP. Maybe this is not financial advice. All right. I'm not financial advisor. I'm not telling you to buy XRP, sell XRP. I don't care what you do. That's up to you. I'm simply a, a disseminator of research and share a few thoughts here and there. You understand? All right. But 
I always felt these were long holds. So you're gonna you're gonna get the floods. Boom. Okay, XRP, three dollars, fives, eight, ten, thirteen, twenty. I, I can see that's that's just floods. That's not the tsunami. That is not the tsunami. They know that. They know that. So yeah, so the price probably can explode before all the systems are fully up and running. Because it's going to come on in waves. We haven't hit the first wave yet. They're still in testing period. They're still in the let's sign up partnerships and let's get regulatory clarity phase. They're still in that phase. You'll know when the first wave hits, when the first flood hits, you'll never forget. You'll never forget. There's only going to be a handful of us left when that happens. In my, hum my humble, humble opinion, there's only going to be a handful of us left. So many people have been bowing out because they gave into the FUD, they broke, and I don't hold it against them either. But when the tsunami comes, only less than a handful of us is going to be left. That's how I feel. Simple as that. Same thing with XLM. XLM rises when XRP does. Quant, oh my goodness, Quant. Have you seen what they're doing? But let's get into the rest of these uh, articles here. Um. Sometimes an article just gives me so much thought, you know. Let's go here to this article, right? It's on you dot today. Check them out. They're doing a good job. We're just going to read the headline. That's all we need. Millionaire XRP. Look how they title this. Millionaire XRP whales quickly increase holdings. Why do you think that is? We don't even need to read the rest of the article. Why do you think that is? Because they know the time is near. What's the time is near? That first initial explosion, when there's when the case ends, that first initial explosion, people are gonna go on a feeding frenzy. Believe you me, they're gonna go on a feeding frenzy. Everybody's loading up, but some of them know the real potentiality. They know that high price. They did some calculations. Oh, it'll blow their minds. They're preparing, over prepare. I told you this already. Of course, this is logical. This is not even news. All of us are preparing over preparing we know what's to come and we're going to use that to free ourselves from that crazy system they want to institute that they probably will be able to institute because the people aren't fighting back the people aren't fighting back not everybody not in mass you would take a, it would take a mass of the people to go against the the powers that be to stave off the new system that will be instituted to control everybody it's on it's on, it's on a whole it's on a much grander scale than people could ever imagine they already begun it. They, call, they control the people easily just with the media alone. The media alone. With data that most people will never stop to verify. They control the people with their emotions. That will continue. That's just the first layer of control they're setting up. They've been doing that for a long time. Nobody paid attention to that? There's a reason for that. It will continue. So... The people that are accumulating XRP are the true rebels. XLM, the same thing. All the bank coins, they are the true rebels. They are the last of the real free thinkers that understand we'll, we'll take this value and we're going to separate ourselves from that insane system. The veil, so to speak. We're going to separate ourselves from the depth of Malkut that they're trying to press us down into. These so-called individuals who are accumulating XRP, it's not just millionaire XRP whales. I guess that's what gets the, the views. But everyone who knows about XRP, just from what I've seen, has been accumulating as much as they possibly can because they understand where that price is going to go and they want to retain their freedom. While everyone else that doesn't get in on something like that and, and into the bank coins, they're going to have major, major problems and struggles major problems and struggles everything else is fair game there's no telling what's going to happen with them because they're too easily controlled with xrp because the banks and governments are using them the banks and governments have incentive to make sure it goes up they want a piece of that money it's not just the holders they are the whole they're going to be the major holders i told you they are the true whales everything else is, is fair game bitcoin is easily controlled by all those people at the top you see, when they want to sell, that price goes all the way down. You see that. It's so controlled, it's unbelievable. Although I have nothing against Bitcoin, I'm just saying. 
at any time. It could go up, go down. There's no incentive for the governments and the central banks to treat it special. No incentive. They'll scrape a little bit off the top, but there's no incentive. With the bank coins, they're an integral part of the new system. They can't let them collapse at a point. They must become stable coins at a very high price. At a very high price. No one ever said that stable coins have to be pegged to the dollar and stay at a dollar level. No, they can go to a high price and be stable. And guess what? Nobody else will ever be able to buy one whole XRP. And if you want to go a little further, XLM or Algorand, if they do what they're supposed to do, quant, you'll be able to maybe get a piece. Who wants a piece? Who wants a piece? I don't want a piece. I want the whole thing. I want the whole pie, the whole cake. I'm not here to take a piece. I have the whole thing. So, but yeah, they'll be stabilized at a high price. They want a piece of that. They, they're incentivized to make sure it's high. They're going to thrive off of it. Their money's going to protect, be protected. Remember that document we covered where the big Bank of International Settlements was talking about staking? Did you forget that? What if they actually do that? What if they actually do that? IMF, you know Ripple is on the advisory board of the IMF. You know that. So what if they actually do that? They actually institute staking. Then you have central banks uh, uh, locking up value. You think that they can't do that? You think that they wouldn't want to? That's nothing like. So some people may t take umbrage to that and say, well, Alphanim, you know, um, you know, why would they hold the coins? They don't want it to be like Nostro. No, Nostro is not liquid. That's illiquid. That's locked up. There's no comparison at all. It's not even the same at all. Whenever they're holding XRP and let's say they don't have to hold XRP, it would be wise to hold XRP. Right. From what the documents that I read and some people told me they're old documents now. I don't know. I haven't seen a significant change that Ripple has stated. Maybe they feel they don't have to state it. I don't know. Show me some documents. But let's say they hold XRP. Why would they not? If they can stake it and they can make money off of that. The banks are all about making money. They're lending out all your savings right now. That's why they don't have your money when you go there. They're lending out your money and making money off of your money. Why? So they're all about making money. Why would they not then stake that particular crypto and make some money off of themselves, which means they would have to hold that crypto? You see what's going on with Quant? Quant already told people, like, oh, we're, we're, we're trying to institute some things where that value will be locked up on chain. Now, whether they do that or not, I don't know. We have to wait and see. But you saw a similar thing if you read that S that uh, was that the stronghold document that I told you to read. If you read that, you'll see that they try, they're trying to do a similar thing with institutions, only they're just not on the level of quant. They remind me of quant. They're just not on the level of quant, uh, but they're built on stellar. Right. So that's going to affect, hopefully, theoretically speaking, affect the price of XLM. But they float that idea as well of locking up value on chain. Why would the banks not do that also and get a little bit of interest off of that? Some some rewards off of that? Like and it will be massive because of how much they have. It would be like a self-feeding system. That money's just flowing between them and the little bit of us that actually are still holding at that time. There's a just a, I'm telling you, there's a tiny bit of us, tiny bit of us. And I think they have accepted it now that they're not going to there's a, there's those of us. They're not going to be able to shake out. They've accepted it already. That doesn't mean they're not going to try. They're still going to try. But they I think they understand like, yep, they're here to stay. But the good part about it for them is that there's not a lot of new ones coming in because they've spread the hatred for XRP, XLM, Algorand, um, Hedera, Quant, the bank coin. They've spread the hate. Oh, my goodness. You wouldn't believe how much hate is out there for the bank coins. It's unbelievable. So there's not a lot of new people going to come in. And then you pair that, the hate that they have spread for the bank coins with the outright ignorance and hate that they have spread for crypto as a whole. Oh my goodness. We're in, we're in this boat together. That's it. It's just us. <laughs> it's just us. There's not many newcomers going to get on the boat. But I think about that, right? The, the uh, ability for them to possibly lock up value on chain. It's going to be theirs. It's going to be theirs. And it's not like no short. It's always liquid. That's another thing. It's always liquid, liquid. No one has to do anything. You get what I'm saying? No one has to do anything. But when you have such a high amount of, of value that you can extract from something, such a high uh, amount of money that you can make off something, why would you leave that on the table? That would be illogical to leave such a thing on the table. 
So, you know, and everything is going to need liquidity. Everything's going to need liquidity. So if you're getting in, if you get in early, let's say they do that, that flip the switch thing, everything comes online, they get regulatory clarity, they win the case or something like that, and the banks go on a feeding frenzy. Theoretically, let's say the banks go on a feeding frenzy. They buy everything in sight. I've always said I thought that was a possibility. They're getting it at a low. Why would you then get it at a low only to let the price go up? Then you're saying, well, I don't want to hold any of it. So you're just selling, you're just selling it all. They're not going to sell it all, man. It's like gold. I, I, I 100% believe they're going to treat it like gold. 100%. And you sit on that and you let that interest come in, you know, whatever it's going to be. However, they're going to do that. But it's just going between them. That's the idea. It's just going between them. By the time XRP's price gets to where it's, it, it, it's full potential could lead it. Most people are already done. They've sold. They've liquidated and probably into some fiat that's going to zero. <laughs> into some, and, and, and fiat and stable coin that's pegged to a fiat that could go to zero because they still believe in and trust in the fiats. So, you know, I keep all that in mind. But anyway, that's that's one reason why. It's not just millionaire XRP Wells. That's just how you get the views. That's just the title that brings in some views. I understand. I get it. It's everybody who has people that have two XRP. They probably doubled it to four. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying to do that. I'm just this is my this is what, how, what I'm thinking. OK, I'm being 100 percent. I'm just letting my mind flow with you right now. Um, but that's why. <laughs> that's why. This is well, the same thing. Why people are sitting on a mountain of XLM, a mountain because they saw the potentiality. They understand what's going on. They don't know how long it's going to take. All of these timelines are flexible. This ain't going to be for the week. This is not. You have your quick money plays. You always have to have your quick money plays. Then you got your long holds. You had some of the best money makers in history tell you, you take your long holds, you put them away. You lock them away. Lock them away. Double and triple lock them away. You might have something else to protect them just in case. Click, click. You might have a little something else. But <laughs> you put them away and you, you don't even have to worry about those. You don't have to worry about them. Stay up on the catalyst, but you don't have to worry about them. And you work, you, you make your, your daily money, monthly money, whatever it is, off your quick plays if that's necessary. These are not quick plays at all. I would, like, and we have the timelines, but how many times have the timelines been shifted? Let's just take the Fed as an example. Oh, we're going to come out with our CBDC paper in, in May. Then they didn't. Then they said, we're, we're going to come out with our CBD. This is long ago when we first started the channel, okay? Just give an example of how many times they pushed timelines back or rearranged them. Oh, we're going to come out with a CBDC paper in September, and it didn't come out in September. Then finally, I forgot when it was, <laughs> then they finally came out with their C CBDC paper. It was like October, November, so I don't know, something like that. All I know is the timeline was pushed back. I'm just giving you an example, and that's a fact that it was pushed back multiple times just for a paper, a paper, a research paper. And they needed all the help in the world from Maiden Labs and Algorand. They needed all the help in the world. That tells you how far they are behind. And then some you're going to have central banks that are going to choose protocol that's not going to work. You have that also. This might be a little bit of a long video today, but we have chapters. You can jump around, but you're going to have uh, uh, central banks that choose the wrong protocol and it's not going to work. So they have to switch it. Remember, there's always the possibility to switch infrastructures or integrate with a better infrastructure that will absorb the little one and over and supersede not little one, but the lesser one. I think a lot of them are going to swap out. You saw what happened with when uh, consensus would it was maybe like two banks consensus failed. At least that's what we read in the articles. All right. We read in articles about this. So it's not just me saying it. All right. And then they put it on pause for like a year. I don't know what came of that, but I think they're going to you're, you're going to have situations like that. They're going to swap out. Uh, blockchains, DLTs, infrastructures, whatever they got to do, they're going to swap it. So then you saw the uh, 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 central bank just launched uh, or, or is, is either launched or is planning to launch a CBDC. A lot of CBDC announcements have been announced in the last two to three weeks, but you already know that. But there's one that launched and they're going to be utilizing Polygon. What? Listen, <laughs> bridge systems have been hacked so much. Let me see something. I could have sworn Polygon got hacked. Let's type in Polygon hacked and let's see what pops up. Let's see. If I, am I right? Hacker exploits vulnerability. 
Okay, Polygon Network. How are you going to be a central bank using Polygon? They're going to swap out for something. And in that region, in the Bahamas, I think it was in the Bahamas, they're going to be, there's a bank that's doing this or somewhere around that, that region, somewhere around there. Algorand's already deep in all of those regions over there. I think Algorand takes that. If something goes wrong, here's, a, here's an article. This is from Bitcoinist.com and it says, Hacker exploits vulnerability. Polygon Network, home to popular Matic token, has announced that its platform was exploited by an attacker to steal funds. Bridge systems are risky. Now, I don't know why they don't know that or why they're going to be running their CBDC over Polygon. But I say this, you go with a bank coin DLT for your bank. We're going to see a lot of swapping out. Uh, I'm pretty sure Polygon had a heck of a, or whoever they're running it through on Polygon had a heck of a, a meeting and really wild the people there. But listen, Stellar's do it. will do better. Stellar will do better. Algorand is already ready to go. Hedera is ready to go. But let's talk about people that are deep, uh, deep in those regions. Ripple is ready to go. I guarantee you they're drooling, waiting for something to happen. They don't hope it happens, but I think we all see the bridge systems are easily hacked, man. This is why you need a gateless system like Quant. As your overledger, you can use Ripple XDC even. No bridges to hack with Quant. Another reason why the banks find Quant so delicious. Another reason why Quant speaks so authoritatively when they're talking about um, when they're talking about the Bank of England, for, for example. They speak very authoritatively because they know they have someone's ear over there. They're already in deep. But you need a, a, a bridgeless system. Let's continue on here with another article. <laughs> we, we, we got through like two articles so far. Let's continue on here, everyone. But we're flowing. So I was going to cover this article here. It's, it's actually a tweet, but I, this is a reason why I respect what they're doing at Ripple also. You know, listen, usually with money plays, I don't care what they do, but I like it when someone's honest, when they say, hey, we want to help the world uh, and they actually do it. I respect that. Respect goes a long way with me. It does. I don't like people that say we want to help the world while they're destroying it. We want to help the people while you're harming them. I don't like that. A lot of entities are doing that. Ripple is not one of them. Ripple says we want to help the people. We want to help the world. And then they do something like this. Not the first time. They did it with another one in the summertime with Algorand. They helped the children. And here you have them again with a tweet. And it reads, we were walking in a winter wonderland with at Steph Curry, at Aisha Curry, at Eat, Learn, Play at the 10th annual Christmas with Curry's. In their commitment to serve kids, families, and wider community in Oakland, California, I appreciate this. I do. I do. Help the youth. Educate them. Give them the keys to be free and build a powerful new society out of what may become the ashes of the old. So I like this. I like to see this. I'm glad they're doing something. Algorand is another one. It says they want to help, and they do. And they do. They're feeding so many people in India. It's ridiculous, right? Uh, uh, and by that, I mean it's just an exponential amount and it's very, very good, right? I just have a particular way of speaking. So they're another one that I respect that actually uh, does what they say they're going to do. And they educate the youth in the universities. And those youth are going to take the DLTs and the technology they learned about, build their own businesses, work for themselves, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, hopefully, they improve the world a little bit with that freedom that they're going to experience. So I like that as well. But let's continue on here to another article here. Right? So if we get this, this article here is from Coin Edition. And it's titled Ripple XRP Price Prediction. I love these articles. I really do. So it's cute, right? XRP Price Prediction. I can't even believe the years they're talking about here, 2023 to 2030. I'm like, OK, let's see what they're talking about. It says, will XRP price hit one dollar? So what? Wait, what? One dollar. Do you know what XRP does? Have you not? You definitely are not a subscriber to the channel. You haven't seen the banks XRP has signed up to use. Can you imagine when all of those hundreds of banks are sending XRP back and forth? You thought before that price moved off of retail, remember that everybody dreams about that all-time high or wherever the price was before the case, remember that? 
You liked that thing. That was good, wasn't it? That was cute, wasn't it? You liked it. You, was, you were feeling yourself, weren't you? That's nothing. That's nothing. That's what retail was doing. I don't care about no retail. That's what retail is doing. Retail, go play. Go play. It's time for the banks to step in. Yeah. Big money. Big pants. Big blazer. Big a money to step in. You thought that was good? You ain't seen nothing, dollar. Let us get clarity on that case. Let us get, I could be wrong. I don't think I am. Money on the wood makes the betting good. Boom, put it right there. I, I really feel with all of my being when that case ends. Who? We're, we're blowing past a dollar. I could be wrong. It's always a possibility. Do you understand how much people love XRP? But they're scared. They're not like us. They're not like us. They're not long holders of anything. They sold everything. But they're waiting. They're like, they just need the right signal. I learned this in the stock market. I was in the stock market way before I was in the crypto. <laughs> and there's a weird thing that happens when the price starts going up. That's when people buy. What? It's true. When the price starts going up, that's when people buy. As crazy as it sounds. They don't buy when it's down low. They don't. It's down low. You could tell everybody that you want. Oh, this is great. Oh, it's going to explode. Oh, there's cattle. They don't care. What? It's that low? It's 38 cents? 39? Come on now. It's not going anywhere. That's trash. It's horrible. It's an ish coin. Like, all oh, this nonsense. They don't know any. They didn't do any type of research. But that's how typical minds of individuals work. Most individuals work, right? We're the rarity. As soon as it goes up to 60 cents, watch the people start buying. Then it'll go up to a dollar. Watch them start buying some more. 150, they'll start buying. Oh my, the FOMO will start. They were right. They'll take it as confirmation that everybody was right, even though we had tons of research. Watch it explode past a dollar. Watch. I mean, look, once again, I could be wrong. And if I am, it is what it is. Let's continue on here. I could talk about that all day. I'm having too much fun. Oh, my word. I've been using that a lot now. I like that. I like it a lot. Oh, my word. Did you hear Algorand winning some more? Did you hear that? <laughs> Everything we have going on, dominating in every possible way. Then this happens yesterday. I didn't get to make a video yesterday because my phone and my technology was going. Hey, a wire. Algorand to support bank and oh, not just the bank and bank and insurance guarantees platform in Italy. Let me read it again for you. Algorand to support bank and insurance guarantees platform in Italy. We're dominating. Oh, it feels good. Yes. Spike the ball and do a little dance. This is the first time. An EU member state, this is what they're saying here from this article on Cointelegraph, this is the first time an EU member state will use blockchain technology for bank and insurance guarantees. This is insane, according to Algorand. That's a fact. Algorand's not going to tell you something that's not factual. Like, we're not trying to have any type of liability on misinformation like stop playing around come on now layer one blockchain platform algorithm has been chosen as the public blockchain to support and quote innovative digital guarantees platform to be used in italy's banking and insurance markets the algorithm supported platform is expected to launch in early 2023 there we go put it on your calendars we'll see what happens there's no guarantees we don't know to what degree they're going to start it at because I know already people are going to come back like, oh, what about the price of Algorand? They said you said it's going to launch him. You have to take into account a lot of different catalysts. You know, I'm just a humble researcher. I'm telling you what is saying in the article right now. I'm giving you my thoughts. There's no guarantees. I don't control all of the different uh, uh, catalysts that are going on. I just watch the catalyst to know how to move and adjust appropriately. That's it. That's it. All of these things are going to take time. But who knows what is to come? That's what we're going to find out. Those of those people who are deep into Algorand, that's your choice to be in the Algorand or not. That's up to you. The Algorand supported platform is expected to launch in early 2023, according to Algorand's December 13th announcement. This is the first time a European Union member will member state 
We'll use blockchain technology for bank and insurance guarantees. A bank guarantee is when a lending institution promises to cover a loss if a borrow borrower defaults on a loan. Do you know the amounts they're talking about? This is why it was good when we covered all these banks. We also took a, a look in those loan brackets. I think we did the same thing when we covered the Bank of Italy when they first tested Algorand. I told you, didn't I tell you I told you they love Algorand? Didn't I tell you? Now you see they do love it. I think they confirmed it. Oh, I'm on fire. Somebody stop me. Oh, I can't wait. Algorand's been doing the best job. I can't wait for the explosion. You thought you were excited. <laughs> Nothing compared to my excitement. Oh, trust me on this. But but to be fair, we've already seen multiple explosions in Algorand. So, yeah, there's that. But we're looking for the big one. That's why we're long holders. Not we. I'll say I. I'll speak for myself. That's why I'm a long holder in Algorand. I believe in them. I know where it's going. I see the vision. I see the team they put together. They didn't put together that insane overpowered team for nothing let's go here let's continue reading here i'm getting too too excited an insurance guarantee is similar but is offered by an insurance company rather than a bank it's an alternative to providing a security bond or a deposit to a supplier or vendor algorand said the block that blockchain technology was ideally suited for the digital sureties it is algorand definitely is um platform uh security platform because of its fast, efficient, low-cost, scalable data, data transactions, as well as its ability to provide protection against fraud. Listen, this is going to grow into something major. It's unbelievable. The blockchain-backed digital, digital sureties platform is being developed by the Research Center on Technologies, Innovation, and Finance of the Catholic University of Milan. So we need to stay up to date with them. That's another one to follow on Twitter. If they have one, stay up to date with in, in different catalysts and articles. A lot of times I like to do, I like to do manual searches on the net. That's where you get the best information. Uh, Frederico Rajola, professor at CETIF. That's a lot of letters said they chose Algorand for its unparalleled level of innovation. Exactly. That's why they were sending Silvio Macaulay everywhere. Notice how Silvio Macaulay was going everywhere and then boom, we get this this dropped on us. But this right here looks like a victory. We're going to see. Now, let's continue on here. Can you even believe I have like 10 more articles? We only got through three, but I'm just flowing here today. Let's go. Let's continue on here. Since I'm taking so long, I'm keeping you guys here. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you do click the like button 42 minutes in, that's what my, my thing is reading here. 42 minutes in, I'm going to ask you to click the like button. All right. Um, let's go here. So this is a tweet from Danelle Dixon, right? It says this upgrade ensures a smooth and mistake free deposit slash withdrawal process no more frustration with memo typos i like this i like this a lot it says here this is from uh, she retweeted this from kraken pro it says official uh, at official update on the xlm at stellar org infrastructure this is very good no more memo for xlm deposits and withdrawals listen continue to upgrade continue to make things better i expect to hear a lot more of more things similar to this Make it, make it easy because the time is coming soon where all these financial institutions, institutions, banks, and governments may, may, it's no guarantees, may be using Stellar. And we want those XLM deposits and withdrawals to flow smoothly, right? So I like to hear this. This was very good. So now let's continue on here. Then you have this tweet from Stellar, right? And, it's, and it goes as such, quote, Every good crisis, good crisis. All right, all right. That's a little bit of strange wording there. Every good crisis creates an opportunity. Let me stop there. I keep hearing these politicians say stuff like that. Never let a good crisis go to waste. What do you mean a good crisis? Never let a good crisis go to waste. So you're thinking egotistically and selfishly to try to use the pain of the people and the vul vulnerability of the people to then institute something when they can't fight back they can't push back there's not a lot of pushback and use that because you're going to wrap whatever agenda you have in the guise of doing something positive 
in the midst of that crisis to push your agenda through. That's what you're trying to say. I don't like that. Simple as that. I don't care. I don't like that. And, you know, listen, just because we work, we, uh, uh, I won't even say we because I don't work with the banks, but just because we want to extract value from the banks or let's say you're one of the blockchains, just because you uh, want to work with the banks and setting up infrastructure doesn't mean you have to become them. Doesn't mean you have to speak like them. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them. All you have to do is do good business. Don't become the same monster that you claim you want to go against. Because, like I said, I've heard regular politicians, and I don't have love for any politician, but I've heard regular politicians say things like this. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Multiples of them say this. It's a cold hearted thing to say. There is no good cri a crisis is a problem for the masses. How about you worry about solving issues so that crises don't occur? Do that. But that's too hard for them. They don't want to do that. They don't want to work. Right. But let's continue on with this little tweet from Stellar. Quote, every good crisis creates an opportunity for us. OK, so she's going somewhere with this opportunity for us to be able to have clarity. Now, that is good. I wouldn't start it off the other way, but hey, maybe I'm just nitpicking and yeah. um, for us to be able to have clarity on what happened in the past. Now, that is powerful. I'm glad she let led us there. There's a double be double meaning there. Do you see it? So she's now on the surface, on the micro level, she's talking about the, S, the FTX situation, what happened in the past. But then that's too recent to really be the past. But she's saying, look at the line of events that led to that. And she's pointing a finger at all the corruption. It says to be able to have clarity on what happened in the what happened in the past. Everybody already knows FTX bungled everything. So what are you talking about? It couldn't be that. She's saying, look at the corrupt politicians, everybody. You know why I, I'm saying that that's how I'm interpreting this? Because the corrupt politicians are the ones holding regulatory clarity back. That's been a thorn in whose side? That's been a thorn in XLM's XRP side because they've been battling with the corrupt governmental entities, the politicians, the central banks. They've been going against the corruption. That's why I feel like this, this is what this means. Look at what's going on and don't, I think she's, this is what I'm getting from this. I know I'm pulling a lot out of a little, but this is literally what I'm feeling that she's speaking about. If you listen to all the interviews and Danelle Dixon has done quite a few, it's leading me, if you watch all of those and then you read this, it's leading me to believe that, right? So I know you're just seeing this little blurb, but understand as a researcher, I take in a lot of material. So I, I'm maybe thinking in a little bit of a different way. She's saying, look at all the politicians that took money from FTX. That's a problem. FTX wanted to dominate crypto and was going to be eliminating competition. That's a problem. It was doing that by putting a lot of money into the pockets of politicians who even after the, the dude, Sam, we just say that, right? Uh, Sam was already known to have done a whole lot of wrong. The politicians took a light footing with them, with him, took a light hold with him, a light hand with him. They were like, hey, we could just do this interview virtually. They took it very easy only to look into certain politicians and come to the realization. Well, this is what research other researchers did. They looked into it and found that those same politicians that were taking it light on him took money, allegedly took money from that individual. Danelle saying, look at that. That's a problem over there. This is an opportunity to have clarity on what's going on. You want to clean that up because we need that. It's not just the Sam guy, the Sam man who was the problem. It's not just FTX who was the problem. It was everybody that enabled that behavior. That's the problem. Take a look at that. That's what I get from this. It says, but also need to create stability in the marketplace. Well, what destabilized the market other than those people allowing these types of, uh, of rogue entities to just do whatever they want. And they knew what was wrong. Even the regulatory entity sat down with this individual multiple times only for that regulatory entity to say, hey, we knew they were bad the whole time. If that's the case, then why did you sit down in multiple meetings with this individual and let them walk away? The implications there are insane. Is anyone going to do something about it? I see some people are actually trying to take actions. We'll see what comes of that. But that's what I'm getting from this. Danelle's roaring here, but it's a veiled roar, right? Like, it's like in hip hop, how you have subliminal, somebody wants to diss you. They don't say your name. 
Heck, they might even not even they might not even say what happened directly, but they'll say it subliminally. They'll mask it with things. But you and I know it's like Tupac said, you and I know what's going on. Exactly. That's what I get from this here. But this is good because it, it tells me Danelle Dixon is still the same Danelle we used to know. Still fighting, still a fighter, still a winner. Still an exposer of what's going on. If you remember all the battles that we had with regulatory entities, it was ridiculous at one point. Stellar was going to war and nobody cared either. Nobody gave, nobody cared. We were in it alone. No, no publicity either, un uh, unlike with, with uh, Ripple. But Danelle is still the fighter that we all knew. And this is good. I expect to see more of the, out of this. Um, I expect Stellar to do a little bit more as far as activities and upgrading the infrastructures and such. Um, so right now, everything's looking good. Everything's looking good. We don't have to agree on everything. <laughs> That's another thing. Like, for instance, I tore that little first piece of the sentence apart. We don't have to agree on everything to walk in the same direction. All right. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to force you to think like me and speak like me and agree. You must agree. I'm not here for that at all. I respect what you think. I hope that you respect what I think and we can still build together and come together and have an understanding. Maybe there's something that I don't know you do. I mean, there's something that I know that you might not. Let's come together and we can grow together. That's what discussions are about growing together. So we're going to uh, end off with a little bit of quant and then gold news since <laughs> the video is going so long today. Um, quant has been up to some interesting things. Here's a post from quant. It says, quote, a digital pound enables consumers and businesses to automate complex and cumbersome processes and implement logic into money. Unquote. At, Gil at Gilbert Verdian explained to at City AMs at editor Parkin, quote, it offers new efficiencies and faster workflows. They've been making a major push, major, major push um, for a digital pound. They've been in the ear of a lot of different politicians over there. It's looking very good. And, and then they have this little um, article attached, not little article. Sorry about that. But they have this article attached here. That's titled Bank of England ramps up CBDC ambitions after offering 200,000 euro to wallet contract uh, wallet contract to bidders. We covered this the other day. Didn't I say quant would be all over this? I think I put that video out. I believe I did. <laughs> but in that video, I said quant will be all over this. Look at them. Dominating already flaunting that they're on the digital pound foundation. Oh, yeah. The Bank of England has underlined its desire to pursue a central bank digital currency. All of them are going to do this. Bank of, bank of International Settlements already let it be known. Put your pedal, put your foot on the pedal and put the pedal to the metal. Let's go. It's time to go. It's time to do it. And you see them all jumping, don't you? By putting a contract for a sample wallet out to uh, out to tender, uh, out to uh, those who would build one, you know, those who can build one, those who are innovative. The Bank of International, a uh, Bank of England, sorry about that, is actively see seeking applications from companies. Quant is already in there. Bro. They've been sitting in meetings with the Bank of England for so long. One of its support it says, um, sorry, but let me not jump ahead. While largely scoffed at by a certain industry, certain industry, there are plenty of backers for the concept of a UK CBDC. I don't know why they put that sentence in there. Who's scoffing? There's all like, for example, Ripple and Quant are already in bed with hundreds of banks. Who's scoffing? If it's not the banks, I don't care what they say. If it's not the banks, I don't care what they say. The banks are the big money. That's that's whose money I'm here for. That's whose money we're here for. When we're talking about XRP, XLM, Quant, really, when I'm speaking, at least, I represent the holders that are here for the bank's money. Who's scoffing? Anyway, we already have the deal signed. It's just a matter of how much they're going to use it. And there's no telling that, of course, there's no guarantees, but we're waiting to see, right? Says one of its supporters, Gilbert Verdian, founder and CEO of Quant, believes a well-designed CBDC could help provide a real-time view of risks and currency outflows to help implement specific and targeted measures to prevent financial contagions. Of course, like I said, you can compartmentalize things then. Now you don't have to worry about bank runs. You have liquidity always. And they have overledger for what? They have overledger for XRP. That's liquidity right there. Boom. Anytime you need liquidity, we got overledger for XRP. We can easily tap into some of that liquidity. What do you want to do? Bank. 
All right, we can set you up with something like that. You need smart contracts, all right? You need the absolute best smart contracts. We have Overledger for XDC, no problem about that. We'll set you up with something like that. And then you will be able to utilize smart contracts for whatever you need with military grade security. You know how delicious that is to the banks? Come on now, this is why, this is why they're uh, jumping at these opportunities lately, right? They're moving so quickly. This is why the Bank of International Settlements is telling them, listen, this is what they're saying. Listen, don't be fools. You have the bank coins ready to hand you infrastructure. They're handing you sandboxes to play with. Take them. That's what they're saying. And I think that's why they sped up their timeline. They don't want to play around with these rogue banks who are trying to build their own stable coins and they don't know what they're doing. They're like children in a box of tools. No, they say they're st they want them to go to the experts, go to the experts and just get this infrastructure, set it up and let's 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 get it going. So. Now, with that being said, I'm very excited about what Quant has going on. I really am. One little one more piece of Quant news. OK, this is from Daniel Field. It was retweet, retweeted, retweeted, retweeted from Quant by Quant. And it says. We are seeing so much upside from CBDC exploration, new models, new efficiencies, also new consumer protections. Big problem right now, isn't it? That's what all these politicians are talking about. Consumer protections, right? And better ways to communicate risk in chained transactions, which could lead to lower barriers to entry for entrepreneurs and lower lending rates. Everybody wants that, don't they? So Quant is getting in deep. They're letting the banks know we're here and we're ready. And I am as well. I can't wait for Quant to go off. My goodness, especially if they start locking up value on chain. We'll see what happens. We'll keep an eye on it. All right. So now we're going to end off here with a little bit of gold news. All right. And this article goes as such. London gold market sued over ethical labeling of Tanzanian mine. Let's read this little tidbit. See what's going on here. The world's biggest bullion market is facing a high court lawsuit over claims it wrongly certified gold from Tanz a Tanzanian mine as being responsibly sourced despite being at the center of multiple allegations of human rights abuse. Oh, the London bullion market. And this is one of the reasons why, like I said, there is a changing of the guard. A lot of Africa. The, uh, a lot of Africa is beginning to take their res control back over their resources, happening little by little. And there is a lot of struggle going on there, but they're attempting it. I'm not saying everywhere, but a lot of places in Africa are, are trying because of things like this. They don't want to be subject to these types of conditions anymore. The West has been extracting a lot of value out of a lot of these places, whether it's Latin America, Africa, and the people that are at the bottom are suffering greatly. They don't want it anymore. And a lot of those people from the bottom, their family members and such, the children of generations past have grown up now. Now they're the politicians and they're trying their best to make certain changes. Uh, things like that should not be going on. There's better ways to do it than this, right? So it says here, the London, and that, that means everything for tokenization. That means everything for tokenization. If there's no trust, then we're going to have to have everything out in the open. I need to see what's going on. Where's this value going? Where's this gold going? Who's doing what? When was it extracted? Who extracted it? How old were they? Things like that. That can cut both ways. It can be good or it can be bad, right? You can use any tool for good or bad. I can use this wrench to change a piece on my or, or in my house or, in my, or on my car, whatever you want to say. I can use this wrench to really bust somebody upside the head and hurt them, right? So a tool can be used for good or bad. Let's hope they use it for good. <clears throat> so now, whoa, this gets actually a little bit deep. The lawsuit claims the, the bullion market acted negligently and breached its duty of care in wrongfully certifying gold from the company uh, from the Canadian companies, Tanzanian. It says London bullion market is being sued, but it's a, ca a Canadian company. Look at all these different ties the West has to each other. It's unbelievable. Certifying gold from the Canadian company's Tanzanian mine as a f as free from human rights abuses under its responsible gold certificate. I guess it's just a name, the London Bullion Market Association. I have to look deeper into that. I want to know why it has that name. The LBMA has continued to certify Barrett's product 
as compliant with its human rights standard. So now they have to find out if that's true. Despite multiple claims from lawyers and NGOs that the North Mara Mine Security have participated in acts of, whoa, we're not going to say that on the channel. No way, but it's bad. It's very bad. Barrett Gold, I'll keep these names in mind. Whew. Barrett Gold, who is not a party in the dispute, said the North Mara Mine is subject to the constant threat of invasion from, quote, rogue bands trying to steal gold bearing rock, which makes sense. There's a lot of theft going on in a lot of places around the world, not just over there. I told you about the oil theft and stuff such. That is a major issue and why traceability is going to is going to explode. Anything that could be used as a traceability protocol. Um, if successful, the lawsuit, which is being brought forward by UK law firm Lee Day, could force LBMA to bar Barrick. Whoa. The world's biggest gold mining company from the market. Woo, this could be a changing of the guard. I told you this change is coming. So, um, you know, we'll keep an eye on things like this and uh, we'll see where it goes. We'll see how, what effect it has. Hopefully for the people, you know, justice will be served and hopefully they can live a little bit better, work in better conditions. That's the hope. Right. Uh, but also if this the biggest allegedly the world's biggest gold mining company is banned from the market, there's a change coming. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time. Let's get to the money.